one day in your life you will need to say I don't want to be normal you're really a follower like Paul you're really a follower nobody can move you with other reasons it will take a while yes yes now, and now the vatican just ruled the other day that transgender people can be baptized catholic now of course. why why is this of course they are but i mean why are they just coming out with it this is something they've been doing before okay He's just came out to make it official. This is him coming out of the closet, really. But this is something they do. Satan needs this done because this is primary. This is the this is the the energy that he needs to be released into the world, so that the Antichrist can have his new world order. That all-seeing eye of Horus. Horus is the Antichrist. So that's just one of his names, Horus. So Vatican rules, transgender people can be baptized Catholic. Why am I not surprised? Because the Catholic Church is the sin is a synagogue of Satan. Look, the Catholic Church is not Christianity. And if you are a Roman Catholic, you are not a Christian. You are a Roman Catholic, which is an idolatrous cult, which is colossal in size, but it is an idolatrous cult. And they are partly responsible for even uh, the names of the days. How we, You remember how we were talking about the names of the yes. days being named after various gods. Mm. Where, did the, where did all this come from? The names of the days were given by, were, were given according to the Gregorian calendar. Now, in Nordic countries like Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, etc., the sun, which is Sunday, and the moon, Monday, also became the first two days of the week. And the Roman gods became four of the Nordic gods with similarities. Mars became Tyre, which is Tiu or T or Tuesday. If you can look up Tiu, you'll see that's T a god, right? Tiu's day is that god's day. Mercury became Odin, which was Woden or Wednesday or Woden's day. Jupiter became Thor, which was Thor's day. And Venus became Frigg, which was Friday or Frigg was also called Freya, the goddess. So the days of the week were named after the celestial bodies which the Babylonians observed. The sun, the moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Saturn, and Jupiter. Those are the celestial bodies with the, which the Babylonians observed. Now, the Gregorian calendar was originally invented by Pope Gregory XIII, from whom it gets its name. All right, the Gregorian calendar gets their, gets its name from Pope Gregory, and it was developed in 1582 and was based on a design by a man by the name of Luigi, Luigi Lilio, also known as Aloysius Lilius. Now, does that have it, have anything to do with Super Mario Brothers? This this video game called Mario Brothers, where there's Mario and Luigi. I don't know. I have no idea. But 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 as far as the Gregorian calendar being um, a Catholic creation is concerned. This thing came from the Pope himself. So when I see that the Vatican is ruling that transgender people can be baptized Catholic, I'm not surprised. And the idea that the names of the days are named after these gods, Sun, Moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, those are all the names of gods. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those are all the names of gods. You'll never find any name of the day in the Bible as far as Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You'll find the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. But you'll never find Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday in the Bible. Why? Because God, obviously God's in God's word, there's no day that is named after a fallen God or a, or a fallen angel. So if the Catholic Pope has named the days after the gods that the Babylonians worshipped. What business do you have being a Catholic? What business do you have being a Roman Catholic? And this person who calls himself the Pope calls himself the Vicar of Christ instead of Christ. Vicar, vicarious, from the word vicarious. It means that you are <laughs> living out the expression of Christ as if you are Christ. 
You are the representative of Christ instead of Christ on the earth. It is you. So it's this Pope person positioning himself. So this Pope Gregory the 13th is the one who, you know, named the Gregorian calendar after himself. Now, this Pope, this Pope, um, this Pope Francis, who, who ruled that the transgender people can be Catholic, can be baptized Catholic. He did not overrule Pope Gregory's um, Gregorian calendar. He's kept it the same. With a flick of his, of his wrist, he can overrule it. But he's kept it the same. In fact, he's taking it a step further to make sure that transgender people can be baptized uh, Catholic. And that just opens up a whole world of debauchery and depravity inside the Catholic Church. That's why the Bible is saying, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. And you'll still have people arguing and saying, well, that might be true, but uh, we still venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary. I'm wondering, how is she the Blessed Virgin? She had Jesus, and then afterwards she was married. She was she was married to Joseph the whole time, and she, she had sons and daughters. The Bible says that she had sons and daughters in Matthew chapter 13, from verse 55, the Bible says, and they were speaking of Jesus. They were speaking of his brothers and his sisters. They're like, how does Jesus have all this power? They said, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? So they're asking, Jesus has brothers and sisters. We know them. This is Mary's son, Jesus. His brothers are Joseph and James and Simon and Judas. So how is it that she's still a virgin after having all these children? It's not possible. They have replaced Mary. What they did was they gave the, I told you they're worshiping the ancient Babylonian gods. And in ancient Babylon, they worshiped the goddess Semiramis. And from Babylon, it went to Egypt where they worshiped Isis. And you see Semiramis in Babylon, mother and child. You see Isis in Egypt, mother and child. You see the same thing in Roman Catholicism today, Mary with the, with the so-called son, mother and child again. And they're still worshiping the same thing and we've made this thing plain to them and they're still trying to argue. So they shall receive, they shall reap what they sow. And so this is what the Bible has to say about that Vatican, about the Catholic Church so that we could just, you know, wrap this chapter up because we see how the power of God is able to deliver. Revelation chapter 17 from verse 1 to verse 6. It tells you who they're talking about here, who the word of God is talking about very clearly. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore. What does he call her? The great whore that sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now look at her name. The mother of Hollis, the mother, the mother. And you, you keep on venerating the so-called mother of God. They keep on blaspheming. You saw that she is a blasphemous woman and she's calling herself mother of God. It's blasphemy. The, the mother of harlots and, and the so-called Mary that the Catholic Church is worshiping and venerating are one and the same. And you can see them. You know a tree by its fruit. They just legalize transgender marriages in, in the Catholic Church. That's, that's more than enough evidence. And you can see their colors here, scarlet and purple. 
Look at their colors, scarlet and purple. The exact same colors described in the Bible concerning the great whore, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It was the Catholic Church. Even in those days of the book of Acts, they knew who the great whore was. They knew, they knew, there wasn't any question about it. They're talking about the Vatican, the Catholic Church, the Pope, the, well, of course the Popes came later, but the Vatican, the, that, that false church in Rome. And the pastors who subscribe to the Catholic Church are also going to be wedding the same-sex couples. Yes, and a lot of and a lot of churches are funded secretly by the Catholic Church. True. That's why you'll see some a lot of these um, pastors or famous televangelists. You see them standing very yeah, close the with the Pope. Yeah. Meanwhile, the, if you're a true believer, if you're a true follower, true follower of Jesus Christ, true disciple of Jesus Christ. You expose the Catholic Church as the mother of harlots, the great whore, the of the abominations of the earth. They call it. They call the Catholic Church the Holy See, and they and they spelt it S E E, but it's really S E A, meaning the waters, the marine kingdom. The the Bible says that that she sits upon many waters. He said, "I will show you the judgment of the great whore." that sits upon many waters. Why? Why do they describe it as waters? Of course, figuratively, waters can describe people, but really, she sits upon many waters because they rule over the marine kingdom. And if we know of the powers that rule this world, we know mainly they're ruled from three basic areas. Uh, the Washington, D.C., the military capital. Then there's uh, uh, London, England, the, uh, the financial capital. Then there's Rome. Which is the, which is the, the spiritual capital, but it's really abominations. And so all these, when you hear these scandals coming out of the Vatican of the young boys being sodomized, really that's what it is. Why are they doing it? That's the energy that they need. And now it's becoming more common. I saw these young boys in South Africa, students who shouldn't have anything to do with any kind of sex. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. God bless.